What's up YouTube? I want to show you a little pro trick to be able to make absolutely massive project templates with very minimal impact on your CPU usage. So this is a trick for Cubase. I know that Ableton has got the freeze function. Cubase also does have a freeze, but I find it doesn't quite work as well for this type of thing. Anyway, let's dive in and have a look. So, as you can see, I've got a massive project open here. Most of these channels, uh, in fact, all of them are plugins like Phase Plant, Vital, that kind of thing. There are a couple of sampler tracks with stuff like kicks and snares and open hats. Here's an interesting thing though. This is something that I've kind of neglected learning for many, many years while using Cubase. Now, having figured this little trick out, I'm able to, let's say for example, I've synthesized the snare here. I want to load it into a sampler track, but I don't want to, I don't want to delete the actual synth. I want to save the preset and the memory and the MIDI and everything within the project. So Cubase gives you the ability to disable a track. And what that does is it removes it from the CPU. As you can see, we've enabled it and we've already got a quite a jump in the CPU usage over here from just the synthesis of a snare drum in Vital. So you can imagine with projects that are like 30, 40 tracks, you know, with orchestral stuff, this is quite a popular little trick where they have projects of a thousand, two thousand instruments. They're all just disabled and they're using singular ones at a time. So I think this is particularly powerful for people like myself who synthesize a lot of drums and that kind of thing to be able to maintain the information from before resynthesizing the track, just disabling it, it removes it completely from the CPU. You can move on with the project and you can always come back to it later. I guess it's a little bit of a dangerous thing because now you can come back to it if you need to. But at the same time, for stuff like templates, this is incredibly powerful. Because as you can see, I've got, you know, 10 plus, maybe 20 instances of just face plant alone in this project, that would not even be possible on my old CPU. So, of course, not all of these instances are playing at the same time. What I like to do is audition bunches of different things. So, say for example, I want a riser here, I want to try different risers and that kind of thing, rather than cycling through samples uh, when I've got a template. Uh, co in template context, I find like having presets and that kind of thing all loaded up, ready to go, tuned to the specific project, uh, but, like transposed and everything is such a powerful thing. So anyway, this snare synth track over here, it's a fairly simple preset, but say for example, if I supply this template to you guys, like if I sell it as a product, maybe you guys want to jump in and fine tune it or detune certain elements within that. You know, just having the sampler track loaded might not be enough for you guys to tweak and stuff like that, but, or, you know, when I'm jumping back into it in template context. So, you know, being able to disable this, you'll see that the CPU usage jumps down quite drastically. Now, we've got the snare sampled in a sampler track, but we can always jump back to the preset and, you know, tweak it if we need to. And it's the same thing what I've done with the kick, the hi-hats and everything like that. So you can see there's a lot of stuff here that's not even, um, you know, say for example, we want a duduk. I don't have to now go through my entire library within uh, the UVI stuff because I know often I'm going for the duduk for this kind of stuff. So then I can just quickly enable the track. <laughs> And I can tune it to the, whatever this project I'm working in is. Anyway, just a quick example of how powerful this little trick is, this enable disable button that I completely didn't even know existed until very recently. So that's completely changed the game for me when making templates. You know, also for doing the videos, often I need to free up CPU space. I've got a massive project open. I don't want to delete stuff because I still want to go back and work on that stuff, but I can just disable it, free up some CPU space while I focus in on a particular loop, render that thing out, jump back to the rest of the project. So this is also why freezing, I don't think fits my workflow as much because I generally work in smaller chunks of audio. You know, for example, like with that snare and with that kick and um, stuff like that, those are just singular hits. 
you know we're not dealing with the entire project like the mix do you know what i mean so i think freezing is in that kind of thing is more suited for mixing contexts whereas this enable disable this is more suited for uh, composing and production and that kind of thing so yeah nice and simple quick and easy little trick for you guys today i'm sure that will benefit you guys I absolutely change the game for me like i said so yeah nice and quick one for today hope you guys enjoy that let me know what you think in the comments if you're new here please consider subscribing to my channel every like and subscribe definitely helps me so much i don't monetize my videos so everything is kind of based around my own personal promotion of music and that kind of stuff so yeah every like and subscribe helps and also you know if you, if you feel so inclined it would be cool if you could share it amongst your groups and forums and wherever it is that you guys discuss music so awesome thank you so much i hope you guys enjoyed that let me know what you think in the comments see you guys next time cheers